Okay. Well, we appreciate you joining us today. And certainly we welcome any questions or phone calls that you have after the fact on the material that we're presenting today, all about exit planning essentials. Okay. You have to ask yourself, do I want to control the timing, method, and proceeds of my transition? Or should I wait until something happens that takes control out of my hands? And some of you already know this story, but for me personally, exit planning became something I became very passionate about upon the death of my father. I ended up overnight um, having the responsibility to run a real estate company um, because he had not done a very good job of exit planning himself. And it was a very stressful time. It was a very difficult time. My mother depended on the income from that entity. And so it would have been a whole lot easier and better if we had done some planning ahead, ahead of the fact. Um, so certainly that's a dramatic and um, emergency type of scenario, but none of us really knows what's going to happen in our lives. So as you see this list of all the bad things that can happen um, in our lifetimes, you know, exit planning is something that we need to all think about sooner than later um, for our businesses. There's approximately 100,000 business owners in the United States reaching retirement age annually right now. And less than 10% of those businesses are being sold by a business broker or an investment banker. And these statistics um, are so interesting. This is coming from PricewaterhouseCoopers, but they they do this um, survey that, that asks business owners, when do you think you're going to exit your business? And 85% of the owners um, that were 60-year-olds said within five years. And that was the same answer for 65-year-olds and 70-year-olds. And so what that says is they all plan on exiting within five years, but they never really do anything about it. And the same percentage answered that they were going to sell their business to a third party. And what are the odds of that? Well, the realities of third-party sales are that business brokers sell about 8,000 companies a year in total in the United States, and that's only about 18% of the companies that they list. Private equity did come in and buy some 9,000 companies in 21 and 22, and that's about a 50% above 10-year average. Of course, private equity um, has certainly blown up. We've seen a lot of that here. Um, but some brokers also sell to private equity. So a percentage of that, about 17,000 or so, are double counted. So what is an owner to do? Well, ideally, in the simplest of terms, an exit plan is your strategic plan that you are carrying through to a desired end date. Like any strategic plan, you look at the strengths and the weaknesses of your business in light of your objectives. There are also opportunities and threats that will help you get there or become an obstacle. Your exit and your desired method of exit will impact your decision making. For example, if you plan to sell to a third party, your approach to hiring and training might be different than if you plan to sell to an employee or a family member. But ideally, you want to start planning for your exit years before you actually plan to do so, because it allows you time to build value in your business and address any weaknesses that exist. It impacts every decision you make going forward, whether to buy equipment or to hire a person, and understand that planning is not the same thing as implementation. The first task for any owner is to de-risk the business, since none of us knows when the unforeseen will happen. The formulation of a contingency plan will help preserve some of the value of your business. And while this seems like an overwhelming task, it needs to be done in case of emergency in the event of a sale. You need to build it and keep it, doc and keep it updated. So the first thing for every business is to document, document, document. You want a contingency plan in the event of your death or disability in order to preserve the value of your business. The big thing is to make a list of owner decision-making responsibilities, along with who in the organization that would be expected to assume those areas in case something happened to the owner. And more broadly, every process, every procedure, every operation function needs to be documented. So 
To set clear goals is obviously key. Determining your exit objectives and your goals. Do you want to sell the business? Do you want to pass it on to family members or to your employees? Understanding your goals are going to guide the entire planning process. Are In hiring, as in my example, are you hiring a manager for a new owner or are the managers the new owners? If you're expanding, you question whether it will pay off prior to retirement or if it will increase the value of the business overall. Your end goal for exit will help you guide key investment decisions going forward. Every valuation revolves around cash flow. If a buyer pays cash, she sets a price based on an expected return on investment. The price of a business is frequently discussed as a multiple of cash flow, and those multiples are industry specific. Value enhancement, or trying to increase what your company is worth, can make sense if you're trying to sell to a third party. More profitable and growing companies have a better chance to sell. Solid process documentation, like we talked about earlier, is often way more attractive to buyers. While intangibles don't show up on a balance sheet, they often are the determining factor in any successful sale. So about two-thirds of a price of a business is determined by a lot of these intangibles that you see here. How is the management team? Are they capable of picking up the ball and running with it? How much is the owner involved or not involved? Customer concentration is a large problem if that's, if that's the case. It really does hit the value of your business. Competition and market outlook. Are you in a dying industry? Systems and processes. If they're not documented, you're not going to get as much for your business. Sales and margin trends. If they're going the wrong direction, it also can really impact your value and obviously technology. So what business improvements can you look to make um, in order to enhance your company's value or to clean up the financials? Um, within cleanup financials, you want to uh, identify and address any financial issues that may deter a potential buyer. So this could be cleaning up outstanding debts or resolving any legal disputes or streamlining expenses. We need to look at improving profitability overall. Focus on maximizing the business's profitability in the years leading up to the sale. You know, you would implement cost-cutting measures, perhaps, improve operational efficiency, and boost revenue where it's possible. Understand how seller's discretionary earnings is calculated for your business. This figure is often used to determine the business's cash flow and can influence the sale price. And lastly, Assess non-core assets such as excess inventory or underutilized equipment and determine if selling them before the business sale makes financial sense. Taxes are obviously a huge consideration in a business sale. By thinking ahead about your exit, you have time to change your entity structure if needed. This is a really big low-hanging fruit for entities that are looking to sell. Um, and it's important that your team evaluate your structure and the taxable impact and if a structure change might benefit you. You want to work with your financial planner and your tax advisor to minimize the tax implications overall. If you plan to uh, pass the business to family members or key employees, you're going to want to create a very clear succession plan. This includes identifying and developing potential successors and ensuring they are prepared to take over. There's years of training that go into that to make sure that you can pass the baton smoothly. And remember, the written documentation of your business, that's just key. Your internal and external stakeholders need to be communicated with before a big transition, no matter how you're transitioning the business, internally or a sale. So an internal communication plan is important so that the confidence in the new ownership, you know, it can significantly impact the success of the transition overall. You want to develop a plan to retain your key employees during and after a transition. Their experience and knowledge can be critical for business continuity. And last but not least, a customer communication plan. It's important in retaining key clients and referral sources. Ensure all your legal agreements, contracts, leases, 
are up to date and will not pose obstacles during the transition. This includes reviewing any non-compete agreements. Sometimes there's language in our legal agreements that we don't realize might impede our ability to sell or to transition equity. Be prepared for the due diligence process that a potential buyer or successor will undertake. You're going to need to organize all of your financial records, contracts, client data, and any other relevant documents for easy access and review. Some business owners may regret selling their business because they miss the sense of control, purpose, um, or identity that comes with running a company. And others may regret the sale if they believe they sold too early and missed out on future profits. On the other hand, some business owners may not regret the sale at all, especially if the sale allowed them to achieve their financial goals, reduce stress, or pursue other interests. The level of regret, if any, can also change over time as circumstances evolve. This is the biggest, the biggest challenge that we find when people retire or sell a business is all in the emotion and how they see themselves when they look in the mirror every day. So those emotion, that emotional component is a really big factor um, in how you transition your business. It is important to have a third act plan in place for how you plan to spend your time and enrich your life personally. What comes next? You're going to want to assemble a great team. No single advisor knows every aspect of the legal, taxation, financial, and operational issues involved in transferring a business. You're going to want to choose an advisor who can and will coordinate the efforts of all of the other professionals on the team. That's something that we do very well here at Aspen is we love to be a quarterback. So you're going to need a lot of people involved, including maybe a value consultant to help you guide through the exit process. Here at Aspen, you know, like I said, we quarterback for our clients every day with multiple allied professionals. In the end, this is about you and your goals and the dreams for your life. We want you to work with a financial planner that is a CFP professional to ensure your personal financial affairs are in order for retirement post-sale. This will include a post-sale cash flow planning, tax planning, estate planning, investment planning, and possibly even some insurance planning. It's important to get real about post-sale proceeds and how it will become an income stream for the rest of your life, as well as fulfill any legacy goals. Planning is not implementation. Looking at Google Maps is not the same as starting the car and moving down the road. A good financial plan will help you adjust as life hands you curveballs and opportunities. And we would be honored to help you evaluate your options. I know that this is a quick presentation, but I'm sure you're going to have questions because exit planning, just like financial planning, is very unique and it's different for every, every company and every individual. But we would be so honored to have a discussion with you about how selling your business fits into your overall financial plan. Yeah, thanks, Helen. One of the one question that did come up is, and we've just in practice, you've done this so many times and worked with so many clients who've gone through a business sale or a liquidity event. A question that came up via email that I thought we could address was like, if someone has the idea of wanting to sell a business, right? What, where would they even go to get started? Obviously, consulting their financial planner would be a low hanging fruit to say step one, but um, to find out the valuation or even enter, entertain the idea of what selling a business would look like, what do you think is a good place for business owners to get started at? Well, I think the best place is certainly, I mean, here we have the ability to run an estimate of value for a company. Um, it's not a phase one valuation like a bank would require, but we certainly can get very close on, on what a business value is. Now, that's not necessarily the same thing as what somebody might get from the sale, just depending on is it going to an external buyer? How big is the company? But most importantly, what, what do the owners want to have happen? Um, I don't know any business owner that is happy with the estimate of value that they receive. Every business owner loves their business so much, and they think it's worth a lot more than generally it comes out to be. Um, but depending on what the owner wants to do, Jim, whether it's an external transition, internal transition, then we can bring in the business broker if necessary or bring in an investment banker if necessary um, or help start crafting a plan to move equity down the pike. 
Yeah. And then on that note, what are what are for the average business owner out here that are watching this or watching your recording? What are um, in your experience some things that you've seen that business owners? I know we often talk about some business owners they they run their business like an ATM machine, and some business owners kind of run their business for a point of sale down the road. So for the business owner who may have had a lifestyle business that they treated as kind of their personal ATM machine, they run their family's cars through the business, they run all their expenses through the business, but they realize, hey, I do need to retire at some point in time. Maybe I need to get my business a little more primed and ready for sale down the road. What are some opportunities you think for the average business owner to think about as they make that transition from having kind of a lifestyle business to a business they'd actually wanna sell down the road? Yeah, that's a great, great question. Um, That goes back to that seller's discretionary earnings on the cleanup page. Um, The first step is, you know, you want to boost your profitability right ahead of sale. So the best thing a business owner can do is clean up those financials and quit using it like the ATM machine. It's one thing to have a business pay for an automobile or something like that. It's another thing if people are, you know, going out to eat and it's really not a business expense and running it through their business. I mean, all of that just needs to stop. I mean, personal expenses should really not be run through the business. And and it's going to boost the bottom line to a potential a potential buyer. So it's going to make the company more valuable to have, you know, stronger cash flows standing on its own. Yeah. And then the last question I thought could be beneficial for some of our business and our clients, um, from a, the interplay between being a business owner and estate planning, what are some like, maybe like food of thought or words of advice for people who are considering like how a business would flow through to their estate plan for maybe if they have, let's say they have their their kids involved in the business, or maybe they don't have their kids involved in the business, what are some maybe things that you've unfortunately seen people not prepare for as they've considered like how their business interweaves within their estate plan? Well, depending on the formation of the business and how it reports itself for tax purposes, if it's an if it's a standalone entity, let's just say like an LLC or an S corp or a C corp. Um, one of the biggest gaps that we see is that nothing is mentioned about that in their estate plan at all. So it's just left twisting in the wind. Um, and it's one of their biggest assets. So, um, you know, certainly making sure that the estate plan is updated and it, the entity is at least considered in the overall estate plan is so important. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I know this will be helpful and a lot of folks will enjoy either today or through the recording. So thanks for taking the time to put this together, Helen. Of course. I, I know it was quick, but, um, you know, again, we'd be very happy to help. Do you have anything to add on the estate planning piece, Jim? No, I, I mean, it's I think you already hit the nail on the head. It's um, a lot of clients that we meet with. In my experience, you know, like you said, the biggest part of their balance sheet is their business. And then it's it's a natural you know, I think we're all bullish on our own, you know, ownership and business interests, but it's a natural question to assume, you know, we're all going to live to 90 or 100 years old. But I think it's important for folks to consider if you own a business and that you were to get into an accident, if, to, you know, we didn't get a chance to see tomorrow, what would happen to your loved ones? Like, what would happen to the business itself? More importantly, what would happen to your loved ones behind? Would Do they have the will, skill, and time? Do they have the means to take over that business? Um and so I just think it's really important to think about if you do own a business, if it is your primary source of income for your family, what would happen to that business in the event of your passing? You don't have to necessarily have that answer today, but it's really important to be mindful of that as you go about your estate plan and think about your loved ones. And I think you've you've mentioned at the very beginning of the presentation, some people think that giving their kids, you know, a, a business could be a blessing. And it may be for various reasons, but it could also be a burden if it's if it's not done strategically and without their consideration. So that's the sure. other thing I can really add. Yeah, I love that. That's that's great food for thought. And certainly that comes into play with the insurance plan, right? Yeah. Awesome. Well, well thanks. Yeah. If anyone has any other questions, you know, feel free to throw them in the Q&A. Or um, certainly you can see our email addresses here on the screen. Jim or I would be very happy to engage in a discussion about exit planning Um, and how to transition your business. And then if you know of anyone who would like the recording, let us know. We'll be getting it ready to send out here probably within the week. So thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys.